The U.S. Air Force has released images of a B-1B bomber carrying an inert AGM-158 Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missile, or JASSM. This is the first time the missile was carried on a pylon under its fuselage. The effort was part of a demonstration program that could potentially lead to B-1B carrying 12 JASSM or its anti-ship derivative LRASM, long-range anti-ship missile, externally. Viewers may note that B-1B can accommodate about 24 of either of these weapons in its internal bomb bays. A B-1 assigned to the 419th Flight Test Squadron, part of the 412th Test Wing that serves as the Global Power Combined Test Force, was responsible for this undertaking. The test flight was initiated on November 20, 2020 from Edwards Air Force Base. An external pylon that usually carries ANAAQ-33 Sniper Advanced Targeting Pod was used to deploy the missile. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes how the U.S. Air Force plans to make the B-1B bomber deadlier with Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missile and Long-Range Anti-Ship Missile. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. If you are, like us, fascinated by military vehicles and technology, I recommend you give War Thunder a try. It's a military vehicle combat game which you can download and play for free on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. It has a huge variety of more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s, which you can take to battle on land, in the air, and at sea on more than 80 theaters of war. War Thunder has been kind enough to offer all Defense Updates viewers a special bonus, which will grant you a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship, and three days of premium account time for registering using our link in the description below. So take the plunge and join more than 20 million players from around the world. Air Force Major William Russell, a spokesperson for Air Force Global Strike Command AFGSC, which oversees the service's bomber fleets, among other assets, told The War Zone, An extensive engineering review will help the Air Force understand areas where we need to focus in order to maintain the B-1B as a multi-mission weapon system, potentially laying the groundwork for the integration of future weapons on the aircraft. Following the captive carry mission, engineers will review the data gathered from the flight before moving on to the next phase of the demonstration, an external weapons release. In an official statement, Air Force Major Brett Cunningham, a B-1B test pilot with the 419th Flight Test Squadron, said, Since the Long Bay demo last year, this has really been our key focus point in 2020. Getting ready for this external weapons release demo as kind of the next step in that progression towards external weapons carriage and hypersonic capabilities for the B-1. Augustin Martinez, the project test lead, stated, We are pretty close to the culmination of this demo event and reaching that next milestone. For us, we are looking to do this safely, since this is the first time we will release a weapon from the external hardpoint in over 30 years. So we pretty much focused on doing a safe build-up approach to make sure the JASSM and the B-1 are communicating correctly. The JASSM has correct surface deployment timelines, so once it does get released, it will safely separate. The B-1A was originally designed during the 1970s as a high-altitude, Mach 2.0 capable nuclear bomber. However, President Jimmy Carter canceled the program on June 30, 1977, in favor of air launched cruise missiles carried on board the B 52, intercontinental ballistic missiles, and what eventually became the Northrop Grumman B 2 Spirit stealth bomber. This was done after it became apparent that penetrating Soviet airspace at high altitudes in a conventional, non stealthy aircraft was likely a suicidal endeavor. President Ronald Reagan eventually revived the Lancer program on October 2, 1981. However, the new B-1B was optimized for low-level penetration. 
Additionally, the aircraft was modified with new engine air intakes and other upgrades to reduce its radar cross-section. The resultant B-1B aircraft no longer possessed Mach 2 capability, topping out at roughly Mach 1.25, but had much better survivability because of the stealthier profile. The B-1B is powered by four General Electric F-101 GE-102 after-burning turbofan engines. Each of these can generate 17,390 pound-force (77.4 kilonewtons) of thrust when operating normally, and 30,780 pound-force (136.9 kilonewtons) with afterburner. These enable B-1B to have an excellent range of 5,900 miles or 9,400 kilometers and a service ceiling of 60,000 feet. The engine performance makes B-1B capable of hauling a lot of weapons. B-1B has a massive payload of 125,000 pounds or 56,700 kilograms internal and external ordnance combined. It has eight external hardpoints for 50,000 pounds or 23,000 kilograms of ordnance and three internal bomb bays for 75,000 pounds or 34,000 kilograms of ordnance. The AGM 158 JASSM Joint Air to Surface Standoff Missile is a low observable standoff air launched cruise missile developed by Lockheed Martin for the United States Armed Forces. It is a large, stealthy, long-range weapon with a 1,000-pound or 454-kilogram armor-piercing warhead, and it went into service in 2009. JASSM has a range of about 230 miles or 370 kilometers. Viewers may note that it was used in combat when two B-1B bombers launched 19 of the stealth missiles at a Syrian research center in Barza. Lockheed Martin worked on the missile further and AGM-158C was developed, which is an anti-ship variant and is named LRASM by the U.S. Navy. The missile uses inertial and jam-resistant GPS navigation system for the initial phase of the journey, a two-way data link is present for mid-course guidance, and a radio frequency and infrared sensor is activated in the terminal phase. The warhead is potent enough to cripple a large warship. Countries like Russia and China have been developing sophisticated layered air defense. These systems are difficult for traditional aircraft and missiles to penetrate. Since the B-1B is not very stealthy, unlike the B-2 Spirit, it is vulnerable to the current crop of sophisticated air defense systems. For example, the Russian S-400 air defense system has an engagement range of 400 kilometers or around 250 miles. This is where JASSM will be useful since it can be launched from standoff distances without getting inside the engagement envelope of enemy air defenses. LRASM will be extremely hard to defend against if a barrage of these is launched against a rival's naval fleet. U.S. Air Force has about 100 B-1Bs, so this is a sizable fleet. If the integration is successful, it will make this fleet a very potent aerial assault force capable of long-distance strikes against surface assets as well as warships. Clearly, if the undertaking is successful, B-1B will turn into a deadlier platform. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and Kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.